everyone. Welcome to an in-depth guide looking at how to upgrade all four of the ray guns on Alpha Omega today. That's right, we brought you an in-depth guide for how to get any of the ray guns you might want. Also included here is the guides to building the teleporter pads as well as the upgrade kit for the Mark II. This is an in-depth guide. If you guys are looking for something specific, timestamps to the individual ray gun sections can be found in the description below. There's also a link to the shield guide in the description. And I also included a link to the Pack-a-Punch guide for my channel because the Pack-a-Punch is absolutely essential to upgrading these ray guns. Just a few things I wanna go over before we get started today. If you like this kind of content, Feel free to like and subscribe. I wanted to answer a couple questions before we started the guide. Like, first question I had is, what happens if you have a completed ray gun and you want to build another one? Well, you need to make your way to the cabinet in Rushmore where you got the Mark II frame. And you need to exchange your completed ray gun for a Mark II frame, assuming you have the ammo canister for the ray gun you want to make. Otherwise, you can't craft a new ray gun. And you're also stuck holding whatever ammo canister you have, which can be a little bit of an impediment. But once you exchange the Mark II for a frame, you can then craft the next ray gun you want to make. And that leads me into my second point. If you guys have a ray gun in your inventory and want to change it out for another one, all you have to do is come back to the, the cabinet where you got your frames and hold square on the PlayStation to put down the ray gun. They will always be in the VXYZ order from left to right. They can be exchanged between players on four player and you can retrieve ones or exchange them on solo simply by coming to this cabinet. I didn't know that for the longest time on Black Ops 3 so I'm including it here as a special tip for anybody who's maybe not played the map before or simply wasn't aware that you could switch them. That way you can just go ahead and get whatever ray gun you like anytime. If you put down any of them besides the yellow one, they will they won't get ammo if you're not holding them, like if you get a max ammo. So just know that. Alright guys, this is the upgrade for the Ray Gun Mark II V. In order to do this upgrade, you're going to need to turn on Pack-a-Punch. After you guys turn on Pack-a-Punch, you need to build the upgrade kit. The first piece can be found in the bottom downstairs of the yellow house on the dining room table. The second location for the tubing is upstairs in the bookcase. The final location is upstairs in the yellow house on this little brown table. The next piece we're going to need to find, actually the next two pieces we're going to need to find, are both found in the bunker. The first one we're looking for is in the storage area. Once you get down to the storage area, you can be found in one of three locations. The first spot is here on the edge of this rack. The second one, as you can see in the video, is right here on this barrel next to the mannequin. And the last piece can be found over in the back along on the way out, just sitting here on top of these barrels. The last piece we're going to need to find is in the APD control room. The first location you're going to want to check, as you can see here in the video, is this little rack off to the side. Go ahead and pick it up. If it's not there, you're going to want to go ahead and run to the front of the pyramid and look at this chair right here. If it's not there, go ahead and make your way up this tiny little staircase, and it should be on the desk right here in solitary. Once you have all three pieces of the upgrade kit, make your way to the top floor of the operations building where Rushmore is. And there'll be a buildables bench. That one is assigned as the upgrade kit. You can't build anything else there. So go ahead and craft the upgrade kit this time. You can also craft it when you're building a Mark II upgrade. It's just easier to get it out of the way ahead of time. Once you've pack-a-punched, once you've turned on the power, I usually pack a punch to get the alternate ammo for whatever gun I'm going to get. But you, the first thing you need to do is you need to find these four TVs around the map after you've turned on power. And you need to turn on whichever one is active for you at the time. They can be found in the APD control room by the pyramid, in the diner, behind the yellow house and in the starting area the little area where that quarantine tent is between the operations and the blue house 
One TV will be active at a time. Turn on the TV, kill zombies near it for a soul box. It'll reveal a number. Remember that number and remember the order you activated the TVs in. Each, there'll be four numbers in total. Mine made out the code 9348. Mine was the APD control room, then the diner, then the site entrance, then the back of the yellow house. Once you have all four numbers, you're gonna go ahead and make your way to the operations room and you'll find that at the Rushmore terminal, there's now a keypad that'll allow you to enter your four digit code. Simply use your action button to enter each number and then you have to hit enter. In this clip here, the zombies really, really, really did not want me to hit the enter button. They really didn't but I finally managed it. And once you do, Rushmore will give you a quote saying you have access to the Mark II frames and this cabinet will rise up here in the operations room. Go ahead and retrieve a frame at this time. And you need to have kilowatt alternate ammo equipped in order to do the first upgrade that we're gonna do here today, the Mark IIX. Forgive me, the Mark IIV. Once you have kilowatt equipped to your gun, Go ahead and make your way down into the bunker in the generator room. And you're going to be looking along the walls for a yellow smoking panel, basically. And you're going to want to go ahead and shoot that panel with your gun that's equipped with a kilowatt. Behind that panel, you're going to find a little ammo canister, and you're going to want to go ahead and pick that up. Rushmore is going to tell you at this point that you need a more powerful energy source. So go ahead and make your way up to the top of the map. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking for five power poles. Now I'm gonna tell you guys a little tip. These are always gonna be the same five power poles when you do this upgrade. And each of the one pole at a time is gonna have a little yellow sparking bit on the top of it. And what you're gonna need to do is go ahead and shoot that sparking bit with your kilowatt equipped gun and it'll become a solid energy spark as you can see i already got a couple here it's always going to be the same five power poles so once you know that this upgrade becomes pretty darn easy let me tell you once you get the last one here you'll know you've completed the step because all the energy lines link up and this generator on the side of the map here starts crackling like crazy. Go ahead and stick your ammo canister in the generator and it'll create the soul box. Go ahead and fill up your soul box. It's 10, 12, 15 zombies. I don't know the exact number, but you'll know you're done when the circle on the ground disappears. Once it disappears, go ahead and retrieve the ammo canister and make your way up to the operations building. You'll get a confirmation quote from Rushmore telling you you, telling you, you are now ready to craft your ray gun. This will craft the Mark II V. This is honestly my favorite ray gun because it doesn't run out of ammo. It recharges on its own. Continuous stream of energy. Pretty powerful. All in all, a pretty solid upgrade to the ray gun. When it's pack-a-punched, it gets 50 more ammo in the clip. It still recharges and it becomes a little bit more powerful. So you get a longer lasting ray gun that has infinite ammo when you pack-a-punch this one. All in all, an easy ray gun and a powerful upgrade. We're going to be crafting the Raygun Mark II X. In order to do this, you need the Cryo Freeze Ultimate Ammo for to a weapon. You're going to want to check the prisoner holding, the operations building, and the APD interrogation room for a blue smoking cabinet. Once you find it, go ahead and shoot it with your Cryo Freeze equipped weapon. It'll give you an ammo canister that you can then pick up. And you're going to want to go ahead and make your way down to the generator room in the bunker. In this room, you're gonna need to look for, and this, can, this step can only be done in the generator room, by the way. You're gonna need to look for these blue on fire zombies. Shoot them a little bit with your cryo freeze gun. Make sure you melee them once they're frozen. And even if it doesn't show it, you can walk up and hold X or square, sorry, and pick up this little pile of goo that they drop. Sometimes it won't show, so don't worry about it. 
you'll usually hear a little indication noise. You need to do this three times in order to complete this step, and you'll get a confirmation from Rushmore once you've filled the ammo canister with the necessary samples from the zombies. It's pretty straightforward, takes very little ammo to actually complete this step. Once they're frozen, any knife will work. I just had, I think I had the Bowie knife just for fun. You can shoot them even when they're in a horde. Just make sure you knife the one that was on fire. Otherwise, you'll have to wait till the next one. Once you have all three samples necessary, make your way from the generator to the APD control room. Go ahead and place the canister here for a standard soul box. Once that soul box is complete and you retrieve the ammo canister, you now have everything necessary to craft the Mark IIx. So go ahead and take your canister and your frame up to the operations center buildable area and you can go ahead and craft this ray gun. This ray gun is the rapid fire variant of the Mark II, pretty much a machine gun. One of the biggest downsides is if you fire it on full auto too long, it'll climb up on you. So it's actually better to fire this one in bursts. Plus it'll run, it'll burn through ammo pretty quick. It only has 33 rounds in the clip. And while it does have 260 some odd in reserve, you can burn through that pretty darn fast if you, if you have a whole bunch of zombies. So just try to be mindful of that fact. Otherwise it's a fun ray gun, like great sound. Tons of fun to use. Reasonably powerful all in all. When upgraded, this ray gun is pretty amazing in the fact that it becomes a Kimbo, otherwise known as dual wield. So you now have two full auto ray guns. The only real downside is they share the same ammo pool. So you're gonna, you can basically burn through the ammo twice as fast, but you can shred zombies in pretty short order with this ray gun and it's great that you can fire the right one with one trigger the left one with a different trigger you don't lose the ability to interact with objects throw grenades anything of that nature so it's an awesome upgrade and a lot of fun to dual wield the mark ii so i hope you guys enjoyed this upgrade i know i did the next one we're going to do is the Mark II Y. In order to do this upgrade, you need brain rot equipped to your weapon. And you're going to try to, you need to find this smoking little spot outside of either the green or yellow house in the backyard. Once you do, get a brain rot zombie and it'll dig up the canister for you. When you try to retrieve it, the energy orb will fly off. And now you need to take a minute and go ahead and build the teleporter pads. Parts can be found in some pretty straightforward locations. I'm gonna go through here real quick all the locations of the teleporters available on the map. And the teleporter pads are very simple. You craft them, they craft as a single pair. You pick a teleporter pad, place one pad down, and then find another one you wanna link it to and place it there. I usually do like the center street pad, for example, link to the beds area. So I can go from the upstairs part of the map to pack a punch in pretty short order. The teleport's free, except there's a small cooldown. First buildable part location is going to be in the transfusion facility, either inside or in the outside area a little bit. The second one will be in the greenhouse, either downstairs, second floor, or outside on the windowsill. And the final piece is in the generator room. Just look around in here. There's three spots, one on this wall, one near the entrance, and one on the generator where you do the lockdown. I built my pads in the APD control room. You can build them on either bench, either APD control or the greenhouse bench. Do not forget to pick up your telepads. I've forgotten that so many times. Don't forget to pick them up. Once you have the telepads in hand, find the orb, the first location, and place your telepad at that location before you shoot the orb. Once you shoot the orb, it'll go into the little teleporter and you have to make your way around the map in order to find it again. In my experience, it'll be upstairs on the first one and downstairs on the second, but I don't know if that's 100% accurate. So real quick here, we're going to take a trip around Alpha Omega and show all the different little telepad locations. One outside prisoner holding next to the mystery box. There's one here in Center Street in, next to the perk machine. There is one upstairs of the yellow house in the bedroom. 
There is another telepad location in the backyard of the greenhouse in this garden area. And the last location for upstairs that I almost forgot about here is right next to the power switch. Easy to miss, but if the orb's there, it'll be very apparent. The remaining locations are all in the bunker. First location in the bunker we're gonna go ahead and showcase today is the diner location. It's just tucked away here in the corner of the diner. Almost miss, you can almost miss it if you're not looking for it. The next location I'm gonna show is the one in the beds area across from the packet punch. This is one, another easy one to miss. It's hidden here in the wall. I like this one to be my, one of my locations because getting to and from the packet punch quick is pretty important. There's one here in the generator's room, kind of across from the button where you do the lockdown event. Also one here in the APD control room. As you can see, this was the second location. Before you shoot the orb, put your telepad down because once you shoot the orb, you need to be able to follow it in the teleporter. Otherwise, you'll have to do this all over again. Once you do, the orb will hover for a second and then Rushmore should give you a quote telling you that you've completed the step and the orb needs to be charged. It'll always go to the same location. That's going to be down in the bunker in the storage room area. And it's always going to be sitting on top of this stack of what looks like bags of concrete. Go ahead and activate the orb. It creates a standard soul box for you. And yes, brain rot kills do count. So that's a nice little thing. Zombie dogs can also feed soul boxes if you end up getting a vermin round. Once done, you can go ahead and grab that and make your way up to the operations room and craft the Mark II Y. This ray gun is a little bit lacking in solo because it burns through so much ammo if you want to use its full powered mechanic. It charges itself to make a more powerful explosion at the expense of more ammo. But in multiplayer, it has an amazing potential for support. Just on solo, you can burn through your ammo pretty darn quick. I mean, if you just pop off regular exploding rounds, they're usually powerful enough, but most people, myself included, like to charge it, I think. And that burns through three ammo for every full charge, and then you're reloading as well. When you upgrade it, you get six ammo in the clip, but not a whole lot extra in reserve. So you're, you do get a more powerful explosion. We're going to craft the last ray gun for this guide today. The Mark II Z requires the firebomb alternate ammo equipped to your weapon. Once you have firebomb on your gun, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the yellow house downstairs, the greenhouse downstairs, or the lounge. One of those three areas is going to have a smoking cabinet. And you're going to go ahead and shoot it with your firebomb equipped weapon. This one will take a second for the door to peel away. As you can see here, it takes a second. And you can actually get swarmed up by zombies, so try to be mindful of that. I've gone down a few times getting some of these ammo canisters, so... Hope that saves you guys from an unnecessary down or two. Once you have this canister in hand, go ahead and make your way upstairs, back to the top part of the map, and find whichever house's fireplace is belching out purple smoke. That's going to be your next step. Like this one here, luckily for me, it was the operations building, which is a pretty easy fireplace to do. Go ahead and make your way to the one, whichever one it is, and you're going to need one of your grenades, so hopefully you didn't bring sentries, because if you did, you're shit out of luck. Anyway, uh, just real quick here, I want to kind of rant a little bit. If you guys end up getting this fireplace, I'm sorry, but you're probably going to have to restart because I tried for hours to get the grenade to go in that fireplace and I couldn't do it. If you guys know how, great. I mean, cool. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's really hard. Anyway, getting back on track. Once you find your purple fireplace, go ahead and stand up here next to it. I botched. I screwed up this first shot, but you're just basically throwing a grenade up there. You're throwing a grenade up there and it'll go in just like you see here in the video and Rushmore will give you the confirmation about it's time to heat up the ammo. So go ahead and stick the canister in the fireplace for a standard soul box. And then go ahead up to the upstairs 
and craft the ray gun. It's pretty easy to get the grenades in there. I mean, a couple of throws, except for that one building. This ray gun is pretty amazing. It's a scatter shot upgrade. So you basically have a ray gun Mark II shotgun now. It'll go through tons of zombies, just shreds them like nobody's business. I mean, good ammo, good sized clip. Everything about this ray gun is pretty amazing. Including its pack-a-punched variant, which doesn't lose the scatter shot, it gains ammo, and it becomes a full-auto shotgun ray gun. That's right, folks. Full-auto shotgun ray gun. This ray gun is pretty amazing. It shreds zombies like crazy. You can go through ammo very carefully, actually. It's got good range. And all in all, it's pretty fantastic. All four of these ray guns are a lot of fun to use. Uh, make sure you guys watch the little tips and tricks section at the beginning of the video about how to switch them if you guys want to switch off in four player or you run out of ammo in single player. It's a ton of fun. I hope this guy has been helpful to you guys. These take a lot of effort for me to make, a lot of time, a lot of hours. So like and subscribe. Come back. See what else I make. I love making videos for you guys. It's a lot of fun for me. I hope it's a lot of fun for you guys to watch them. So. Hope you guys had fun. I know I did. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.